Are you ready for your accused band of wacky deep cover Russian spies update? Of course you are. Okay, since we left this story, when there had been 10 arrests and one alleged spy still at large, that 11th guy has now been arrested. They got him at an airport in Cyprus as he tried to board a flight for Budapest. After Cypriot police arrested him, they for some reason released him on bail. You know, because spies aren't flight risks. So they released him on bail. That was yesterday's headline. I'll give you two seconds to come up with today's headline. One, two... Yeah, he's missing. Uh, Christopher Metzos was supposed to check in with police in Cyprus today between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. local time, and he didn't show. May I suggest check the airport? And Russia? Maybe you should check Russia? The 10 suspects who were arrested here in the United States were not bailed out. They are actually still in custody. Several of them are expected to appear in federal court tomorrow. They include Anna Chapman, a divorced 28-year-old who reportedly lived under her real name in New York. Ms. Chapman founded a startup online real estate company worth a reported $2 million and also said she worked for two hedge funds and a private aviation firm. And look, here's her Facebook page. She has 161 friends, and they're almost all Russians. Single best detail about Anna Chapman so far? When she bought her untraceable cell phone this weekend, she gave a false name and address. The address she gave was 99 Fake Street. If I could make this stuff up, I would have a three-picture deal. Also, um, this kid, Mikhail Semenko, worked as a travel agent in Arlington, Virginia. Here's a picture that Gawker.com pulled from his Facebook page. It's of Mikhail wearing, if you look there closely, a Soviet Union T-shirt. Very subtle. To illustrate spycraft, of which these spies like us are accused, um, we enlisted two of the notorious Rachel Maddow Show players. Again, despite the appearance of actual attempted espionage, remember, these are dramatizations of real events. Beginning with the secret spy language of signs and countersigns, here are our players reenacting almost word for word what the government claims the Russians said to each other to identify themselves as spies. Excuse me. Haven't we met last summer in California? No. I think it was the Hamptons. Excuse me. Did we meet in Bangkok in April last year? I don't know about April, but I was in Thailand in May of that year. Excuse me. Could we have met in Malta in 1999? Yes, indeed. I was in Valletta. But in 2000. <laughs> if you overheard that at a park bench or a cafe between guys in blazers and baseball caps, wouldn't it seem perfectly normal? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, then there's all the ways that the alleged spies handed each other money. Here's one example spelled out in the complaint. During the fall of 2004, law enforcement agents searched in the area where the car associated with Metzos had stopped. In that area, law enforcement agents cleared away approximately five inches of dirt and buried in the ground observed a package wrapped in duct tape. On June 8, 2006, on the surveillance video, Zatoli can be seen digging at the location and retrieving from the location a small package in the immediate vicinity of where the brown beer bottle was. Money buried in dirt, buried treasure for real. Another technique they allegedly used was the brush pass. And, and this is how that worked. Again, verbatim from the complaint against the accused spies. Russian government official number three was holding a shopping bag. As Russian government official number three descended from the train platform, Richard Murphy, the defendant, walked up the same stairs. As Russian government official number three and Murphy passed one another on the stairs, Murphy held out his backpack and Russian government official number three placed the shopping bag that he had been holding into Murphy's backpack. Murphy then continued up the stairs and Russian government official number three continued down the stairs and walked away. And there is so much more. There's invisible ink. There's hiding secret data in images on the internet. That's called steganography, according to an expert quoted in the Christian Science Monitor. This is the first publicly acknowledged use of steganography uh, anywhere. Quote, the threat is no longer hypothetical. Russia initially called the spying allegations baseless and unseemly, but now both countries are calling this a law enforcement matter and saying it will not affect international relations. Importantly, no one says these supposed spies ever sent anything all that interesting back to Moscow in the whole decade that they were being watched here. But if it turns out they did, you can bet their spying tradecraft for how they did it will have been foreshadowed by the movie Sneakers. 
or by Get Smart. Excuse me, I have a call. I'm sorry.